Puma, what have you done? Clubs, what have you done? Why would you take away something that represents your club? A club is symbolic by its badge. Sigurdsson going to jail, so I'd argue not. Right everyone, it is Finn here. Welcome back to my channel, where in today's video we'll be reacting to the r slash soccer subreddit. We'll be looking at the top posts from the last day, and we'll be looking at what's been hot and happening in the last 24 hours of football. That's how you know I'm getting old. I say phrases like hot and happening. But as you can see, we are currently on the r slash soccer subreddit. We'll be looking at the top posts from the last day. Now, of course, I could look at the top posts and the top football articles from the past week. So basically what I'm going to negotiate with you guys is if you end up enjoying today's video, please leave a like down below and I could make this a regular thing. I could make this a weekly thing where I react to the top football articles of the top week every Friday or something like that. We could visit the subreddit page, but I don't know. We'll see how this goes. But reacting to the top post from the last day, we'll probably look at 10 or so articles. But starting off, as you can see, I've clicked on it. Mohamed Gamaskayas. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. Tries to celebrate by kissing the Fenerbahce badge on the new Puma kit. Oh, okay. Now these these third Puma kits, these third team Puma kits, obviously they've been going around all over the internet. These new kits that have been released for multiple teams, these third kits, they don't have the club badges on, which I don't quite get it, but let's check out the video. Um, okay, so here's the video. Obviously you can see he has scored and obviously you can see I don't have Wi-Fi. There we go, okay. Yeah, it looks left side, looks right side. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. I mean, I don't get that. Who in their right mind from a designer point of view decided like, look at that. Who decided from a designer point of view not to put a club badge on the jersey? Clubs are synonymous with their badge. I don't quite get it from a marketing point of view. Yes, they've still got the name across their chest as you can see here, but they don't have their badge. A club is synonymous with their badge. I don't get that from a marketing point of view. You're not going to sell a Ferrari that just says Ferrari on it, but not have the horse logo. I don't understand what they're doing here. I mean, the jerseys, some do look kind of nice, but they just look like you bought them at a random market over the weekend and that it's kind of a, it's kind of a sellout. It's not a real jersey. It's like a replica kind of thing. So that's the top post from the last day. Um, next up, the record signing for every Premier League club. Okay, so getting into that. Okay, so you can see all 20 current Premier League teams. Um, okay, yeah, I, I, most of them are understandable. Obviously, Jack Grealish being the new addition and Lukaku for Chelsea. Uh, whether Grealish deserves to be Manchester City's most expensive player of all time? Uh, probably not. Um, I guess in the modern age, players cost a different amount. If we got Sergio Aguero to City nowadays, he would have costed more than 100 million. Obviously, Lukaku, I think that's fair. I think he could change this team a lot. Paul Pogba, I don't know. I think we've made some smart decisions since then to buy players for cheaper. I mean, the fact that we got Bruno Fernandes, Jadon Sancho, Varane, all of those players for cheaper. I'm quite happy with Virgil van Dijk, 100% worth it. Pepe, <laughs> we just won't talk about that. Ndombele, probably not. Halle, nope. Flop Sigurdsson, going to jail, so I'd argue not. FBI, open up! Uh, Tillemans, you know what, he scored in an FA Cup final, he's a brilliant player. Joe Linton, I mean, he couldn't hit a barn door with a tennis ball. Silva, uh, it's too early to tell, um, obviously, I mean, a young and up-and-coming up player, too early to tell. Buendia, too early to tell. Benteke, tiny bit of a flop, I guess. Saw, brilliant player. Rodrigo, once again, haven't seen enough from him. I mean, I think a player like Rafinha should have costed more, but at the end of the day, if they got him for cheaper than Rodrigo, that's fair enough. Ings, worth it. Mwepu, uh, Mwepu uh, once again, probably not uh, deserve it of being Brighton's most expensive player. Gibson, same. Aya, too early to tell. Close. Once again, um, I think for majority of these, I think it's quite balanced in terms of players being worth being the most expensive players. Uh, Tottenham Hotspurs become the first English club to lose games in each of the Champions League, European League, the Cup Winners' Cup, the UEFA Cup, Europa Cup, the Inter Toto Cup, and the Europa Conference, uh, Conference League. That is true. Spurs have just lost versus some random Portuguese team that is 11th place in the Portuguese League. I don't know how Spurs have done that. Spurs are miraculous. They can beat Manchester City one day and then a few days later lose to a random team. 
I don't know. It's it's really bizarre. I don't know what to expect of this Tottenham Hotspur team. Apparently, they're going to keep the likes of Harry Kane. Obviously, that would be a huge boost to the club. I feel like there's so much potential in this club. But they seem to bottle really weird games like that. We obviously saw them um, lose versus Zagreb in the Europa League last season, which just proves they can beat any team, but they can also lose to any team, which is super frustrating. Next up, okay, once again, another third kit uh, presentation by Puma kind of thing. Manchester City, AC Milan, Marseille, Borussia Mönchengladbach and PSV fans are not happy. Now let's check these out. Okay, is this just... Oh yeah, okay, those are all the kits. Okay, so looking at the first one, PSV, not bad. As I said, I kind of like these shirt designs, you know. Um, I think from a shirt point of view, I would 100% buy them, but for a badge, for a club badge, uh, or for, sorry, for a club jersey, they are horrendous. I mean, they just don't represent the club. I mean, it looks like a really cool, just style casual t-shirt. But like from a club point of view, it's just, it doesn't represent the club. Um, I quite like the PSV one though to an extent. Manchester City, as I said, obviously you can see the badges absolutely everywhere. But I mean, they don't have one on their hearts. That's a point of football. You wear your badge on your heart. That's the saying. You wear your badge on your heart. You wear it on your sleeve. But I mean, you don't have it there anymore. So a tiny bit of a weird one. Um, AC Milan. I would like it if it didn't have the badge. I don't like all these badges everywhere. Once again, they need the main one. But black and red, at least you can kind of get away with it. Um, we've got Marseille, which obviously Dimitri Payet, the legend himself. <laughs> I don't know. I just find it banter to see a gigantic Uber Eats on an athlete's jersey. I mean, I can't imagine he has too many Uber Eats in his day. Uh, it's a tiny bit like how David Beckham was almost synonymous with Burger King for quite a long time. But Marseille, once again, I like the design, but from a jersey point of view, it's not my thing. Borussia Mönchengladbach, I mean, I feel like that's, that's just horrendous. I don't like it with the orange, white, green, and black. Um, yeah, and those are all the kids together. Obviously, there's the Fenerbahce one. They didn't have a picture of that. Um, and the Valencia one. I don't like the Valencia one, but I quite like the Fenerbahce one. It's kind of like a old boys or kind of like a Boca Juniors uh, kind of look to it. Uh, Dortmund's turned down their edition of Puma's controversial badge list. Third kit. Okay, so Borussia, Munchen, uh, or Borussia Dortmund had the option to do it as well. I don't know, I think black and yellow could have looked quite nice, but once again, smart decision to turn that down. Okay, Diego Costa in his Atletico Minera presentation. If my mother was on the pitch and I had to beat her to win, I would. I'm going to do everything to win. Okay, well, Diego Costa's just got a winning mentality. I think we know that by now. Obviously, with the likes of Romelu Lukaku coming to Chelsea, I will say this. I don't think Chelsea have had a proper striker since Costa. Costa was just one of those players who would fight for the badge, the badge that doesn't seem to be on most kits nowadays. But... Yeah, I think Costa, I don't know, I feel like he could have still spent another season or two at the top, but I guess it's his career. So unfortunately, we've got a bit of a sad post next, if I can scroll. Young footballer died falling from plane in bid to escape Afghanistan. Now, obviously, that's been news all around the world. I won't get too into that because I don't want to bring politics or anything like that into this channel, but it is very sad that a young football fan has lost his life. It's it's very sad to see. A group of thugs broke into and robbed Real Madrid's official store at the Bernabeu this morning. The criminals broke through the gates with a car and stole everything in seven minutes, including the store's mannequins. Now, that's just bizarre. In an era where we pretty much have lost all of Real Madrid's greatest players, I mean, why not rob the store while you can still steal Ramos, Ronaldo, all of those great players' jerseys, even Varane's? Why in an era where we've got Vinicius Jr. and them? I don't know, just poor timing. I like the idea of poor timing. Obviously, I mean, criminal, I mean, I'm not, trust me, I'm not promoting any sort of violence or criminal activity. YouTube, Please listen to me. And the last post that we'll be reacting to from r slash soccer is going to be Arsenal confirmed four players, Aubameyang, Lacazette, Willian and Renison, tested positive for COVID-19 last week, 14 hours ago. Okay, that's not good, especially because Arsenal are about to face the likes of Chelsea, a Chelsea that has Romelu Lukaku. I mean, even with Aubameyang and Lacazette and of course Willian, I think they would have struggled past Chelsea. I don't know if I give Chelsea any hope now versus, or Arsenal any hope now 
versus Chelsea. I mean, without their two main strikers, I mean, let's be honest, they look so lost versus Brentford. So to do it versus the Champions League winners of last season, I don't give Arsenal much hope. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this week's r slash soccer subreddit reaction. Once again, tiny bit of new content on this channel. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something new. Obviously, the hot topic that everyone will be talking about from this last week, I mean, it has nothing to do with transfers or results, but the new Puma kits. I mean, Puma, what have you done? Club what have you done? Why would you take away something that represents your club? A club is symbolic by its badge. That's how you know them globally. If you go anywhere in the world, someone doesn't know football and you show them a Barcelona or Manchester United badge or something like that, they'll recognize it. Now, obviously, those clubs still have their badges because they know how important it is. Do you realize that? Have you realized that? The top clubs from the world, yes, of course, they're not Puma related, would never get rid of their badge. So I don't understand why some clubs have done it. I find it absolutely ridiculous, but it is what it is. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, subscribe down below. And if you want me to do this on a week, weekly basis every single Friday. Make sure to like this video down below. Can we please get 20 likes and I will continue this. Guys, this has been Finn. F-Y-N-N. Have a good one. Cheers.